Welcome to another special episode of The Dark Parade. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. All right, just right out of the gate, let's talk about the fact that we have done some really miserable movies here on Found Footage Fool, and it was time to do something that was decent. I haven't gone to the classics yet. I uh, haven't gone to the well for like Blair Witch or something like that, but someone recommended, and I, I'm forgetting who recommended this movie now, and I apologize. Please reach out to me so I can thank you uh, personally. But someone recommended the movie My Little Eye from 2002, which is unfortunately not available or wasn't as of the time this is recorded, uh, available on any streaming services. It was just really tough to get. So I ended up having to buy, you know, some secondhand DVD off of eBay. And regardless, I got my hands on a copy of it for not a lot of money. It cost me, you know, 10 bucks, something like that. And it is uh, a, a movie directed by a guy named Mark Evans, who would go on to do a lot of television, uh, the Pembrokeshire murders and manhunt and collision, uh, but had done this movie, My Little Eye, along with uh, a couple of other features like Resurrection Man and House of America, movies I'm not terribly familiar with. Um, but he, uh, he, he directed that and it stars, uh, Bradley Cooper is a side character in it, even though he gets top billing on account of having blown up. It's, uh, got, uh, Chris Lemke in it, who you may know from the Frankenstein theory, a movie that we will definitely be discussing, uh, on this program at some point. Uh, Jennifer Sky, who was Cleopatra 2525, um, Laura Regan, uh, is in the movie and she's been in like Dead Silence and uh, Minority Report uh, uh, just all kinds of stuff has been in television forever still still working in television to this very day uh, a guy named Sean uh, uh, C.W. Johnson um, who also still kind of working uh, apparently does a lot of uh, Power Rangers voice work and uh, has popped up in like guest appearances on everything from CSI Miami to, you know, uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. And anyway, um, you know, a bunch of people in this movie that are, are working actors. And the premise is a, a pretty good one, which is um, all of these people are given the opportunity to spend six months inside this house. Uh, out in the middle of nowhere, they're going to be cut off from society. And if, and if they can survive without killing each other in these six months, then they all get a million dollars. And the catch is that not only do you have to not murder your roommates after six months of close, uh, uh, close quarters, but you also have to, uh, submit to these cameras being placed all over the house, like webcams are streaming. And it's sort of like, like that big brother idea, right? That everybody can see everything you do. And in a pretty good montage, like they, they get to the business of, Hey, all of these kids have introduced themselves and are now in, uh, this house pretty quickly in the movie in the first like 10 minutes or so you're, you're kind of in the thick of things. And there's a montage where you, you sort of see, who these characters are, uh, not necessarily, you know, this three dimensional understanding of the complexity of human nature, but like, uh, Jennifer sky plays Charlie, who is very much a voyeur or is, seems to be using this experience as a stepping stone, um, to get larger recognition. Um, Matt is, seems like he's doing it just to make friends or something and everybody kind of makes fun of him for that. Uh, there's a guy named Danny who, who is, seems to be kind of doing it for, for the money, but he's like this affable enough guy. Uh, Chris Limke is Rex, um, is clearly doing it for the money and also seems to be haunted by this past where, you know, he didn't have a great family life. Um, and then, and then Emma, Laura Regan, um, is, you know, is sort of the final girl. She, she's very quiet. 
the him virginal, like everybody in the movie kind of like Rex is is constantly telling the other guys in the house, like I don't know why you're you're continuing to pester this poor girl because it's very clear she's not going to have sex with any of us. And it's but it also seems like he's got a bit of a crush on her and et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, um, eventually there's a point where things start getting uh, a little weird. They start you know uh getting these care packages uh where instead of the normal cases of food and things like that they're getting cases of bricks and uh you know it, it turns out that a lot of these packages contain items meant to refer to some story in the history of these characters and generally kind of a dark moment and uh, then Bradley Cooper kind of shows up out of nowhere uh, as this lost hiker who is telling him, oh, like, oh, I don't know who you guys are. If You know, I'm on the internet all the time, and if you guys are on some web show, they're doing a good job of not advertising it uh, because I, I don't know anything about this. And also, uh, maybe uh, me and this girl, uh, Charlie, here are going to hook up, which they do, and you start to understand like oh maybe this is not on the up and up because there's a point after he's fucking her that he looks in the camera and says i told you i could fuck her um and then disappears the next day uh and from there things get more murderous like people start ending up dead and uh and the question is who is doing the killing is it the the people uh, uh who have brought them to this house is it bradley cooper is this like crazed and obsessed stalker and as the mystery unravels, you realize, like, oh, this is much more of a, um, a almost a corporate style conspiracy. At, at any rate, I'm I'm not I'm not going to give totally away what the the actual answer of the movie is, but it's uh, it, it's satisfying enough, and and the journey to get to the end was was pretty fun. Um, but this isn't just a mini review of My Little Eye. No, 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 no. This is an opportunity for us to apply good, hard science. And to do so, uh, we have a list of five criteria that we judge all found footage movies by the patented found footage fool uh, set of standards. And let's begin with number one, uh, keeping the cameras on. Is there a good reason to keep the cameras on in this one? And there very much is. Uh, the, the whole thing is being you know, captured and streamed out to the internet, and the movie is, while at times certainly, you know, it has the camera in the right place at the right time kind of thing, um, but that's understandable because the whole premise is that you're capturing these people's every move. Uh, it starts with their sort of web-based audition tapes and that kind of thing. So, yeah, all of it really does a nice job of making itself feel natural uh, in terms of you seeing the things that you see. So big five out of five for keeping the cameras on is a, a, a good idea, well executed for the most part. So uh, well done, my little eye. Um, number two, are the characters worth caring about? Are they interesting characters? Are, do you enjoy following them? And again, I would say that for the most part, yes, I think they are a little two dimensional but also some of those characters are kind of fun and funny and interesting. And like the character of Rex is uh, interesting to watch because he's, you know, certainly a little bit antagonistic with some of the other roommates, but you want to know like, what happened to you as a kid? Why are you the way you are? Uh, why is Emma um, so withdrawn? Why, why is Charlie the voyeur that she is? Who is this guy, Bradley Cooper? What is he all about? So, the like, it's a, an honest-to-goodness movie in the sense that this doesn't really feel like there's a lot of improvisation going on. I'm sure there's some, but for the most part, the characters uh, and the the actors portraying them do a, a fine job of making this all feel fairly natural. It feels more like a movie, and that's a distinction we draw a lot on, on this particular show, that it doesn't feel like the camera is just capturing real life unfolding. But despite the fact that it's, you know, acting and that you are getting 
uh, you know, actual performances here instead of just, hey, we're going to turn on the camera and let these actors improv and, and hope we get something. Um, you know, it's it's good. It, it, I was interested in what happens to the characters. I was rooting for some of them. So um, I'm going to give this a, a solid four out of five for, for characters. I thought uh, I did a fine job with that stuff. Then we get to authenticity, um, sort of the the veracity of the film. Does this seem like a something that that could happen within the logic of the movie, within the, the the story of the film? And do people behave in a way that makes sense? And uh, and all of that completely completely good. Um, you know, it does feel like an early two thousands attempt to sort of talk about the dangers of the internet. And also just kind of how stupid these kids are because there's a point where, you know, they start asking questions about the company that has brought them together and nobody really has a good answer of like, who are these people? And, you know, we kind of signed a waiver that says like, we don't have the internet. We can't investigate who these people are and we didn't do it before we got here. So, you know, it, it's us being stupid, you know, just going after this money without really vetting the people that were going to be sticking us in this house and trusting them to bring us food and all of that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it does. It feels both like something that genuinely could happen somewhere out in the world. And also within the context of the the movie, there's nothing, there's nothing within the story that ever makes you feel like, wait a second, I don't know that it would happen just like that. Uh, there's one effect where a character is beheaded that was like, eh, I don't know that a head comes off quite that easy, but fair enough. I'm not going to complain too much about a, a loose head uh, in, in this movie, uh, but I would say the authenticity again, uh, is solid four out of five, uh, maybe a five out of five, except for that head just coming right off at the shoulders. Uh, number four on our list is watchability uh, is the, is the movie um, entertaining does it, it keep moving and uh, this is another solid 4 out of 5 for me there are times where the movie spins its wheels a little bit uh, in the in sort of act 2 area of the film but as soon as it starts really getting to the point where you're like alright I need something to happen here then all of a sudden Bradley Cooper shows up and kind of spins the story in a different direction um, I'm not totally sure I was on board with the final reveal as to what's going on. Um, it makes sense, but also I wasn't totally crazy about it. Um, so that's where you get, you know, your four out of five, but it's still quite good. Uh, I, I was entertained throughout. I thought that again, because you're dealing with honest to goodness, real actors, um, that all of the characters feel like people that you, if you don't want to know, you at least know somebody like them. Uh, and the plot kept moving for the most part. Like, the the setup is really interesting. Um, getting to know the characters is pretty good. There's a little bit of a sag. And then, like I said, Bradley Cooper shows up. And, boy, oh, you could really tell that guy was going to be a star right from jump. Um, he had just, as soon as he enters the, the house, the movie kind of lights up. And uh, because he is sort of a catalyst for other things that also gets the movie into a, a new gear and kind of propels you towards the ending. So uh, that was all very, very good. Um, so yeah, uh, four out of five for watchability and scares. Scares is where we fall down a little bit. Uh, it, it's not that scary a movie. It's more interesting that it is scary. There are some, you know, creepy tense moments scattered throughout. So I'm going to give it a three out of five for, uh, for the effort. And perhaps I'm just jaded. Your old pal, the found footage fool, uh, has seen a lot of these movies. And this movie isn't particularly scary. Um, it is definitely cut from that 2000s cloth where you get a little bit of extreme violence towards the end of the movie to sort of shock you. Um, and I don't know that I was terribly shocked. I found the movie to be a little bit nihilistic. But that, again, is very 2000s. I'm not complaining too much about that. But I didn't find the movie terribly scary. Uh, I, but I, I found it really interesting. And so um, let's just give it uh, a score here. 
Uh, my little eye, uh, in the grand scheme of things, it's like a three and a half out of five. If I were feeling really generous, I would give it a four. The three and a half really comes from, you know, I don't know that it's breaking a lot of new ground, but it is a good found footage movie as opposed to just a generally good movie. Um, you know what? Screw it. Let's just make it a four. I think it's one of the better movies we've seen in a while on this show. And I would recommend it. Uh, if you've never seen My Little Eye, like I said, it's not terribly easy to get your hands on. But it's pretty good. Uh, I really do like a lot of the character work in it. And I think as I'm, de you know, you can hear me internally debating whether or not to score it a little bit higher. And I think that's what pushes it over the edge is that... I, I was rooting for some of these characters and I wanted them to get out. Um, also, bonus points for including the Evil Dead video game uh, in the movie for no good reason, but I appreciate that. And yeah, it, it's a this is a good one, folks. So unlike a lot of the, the recent super DIY, uh, low-budget fare that we've been covering, this is a, a movie movie and is uh, is worth your time. As well as mine, I was glad when when I wrapped it up. Uh, I, I really appreciated the recommendation. So again, forgive me for uh, for not recalling who did recommend this movie, but whoever did, let me know. I will I will personally thank you, and and it's uh, a, a good score. All right, well that's going to do it for this episode of Found Footage Fool. If you are listening to this on the day it drops on the public feed, uh, have yourselves a great weekend. Uh, next week we will be back with Last Night in Soho on the the main show with Jamie J. Sammons. You are definitely going to want to listen to that episode. And uh, and then what you're watching will be uh, dropping a week from today. So uh, I will be on the high seas for all of that. I will be on a cruise. So uh, fingers crossed that all of that fires like I hope because I don't think I'm going to have internet to fix it if it goes wrong. But uh, th that is the dangers, the, the high wire act that uh, you perform in the rough and tumble world of podcasting. So, uh, as always, thanks very much for listening to the show. Thanks for sharing it around. Uh, thanks for rating and reviewing. If you can do that, that would be much appreciated. Thanks for all that you do to support the show. And, of course, thank you for joining the Dark Parade. We'll see you soon. <laughs>